Over the Garden Wall is abundant in mysteries, odd symbolism, and old-timey imagery that gives the show a timeless, enduring quality. And it's true that some answers are better left unknown. But most viewers have one big question that never seems to get answered no matter how deep you dig. What are those black turtles? Show creator Pat McHale considers what are the black turtles all about as the most common question he's asked about the series. We first see the black turtles at the beginning of the first episode near an Adelwood tree, but they show up often in the show and in other tie-in media like the comics. Beatrice's dog eats a turtle and turns into a monster, later coughing it up unharmed and reverting to its normal self. The raccoon in Schooltown Follies throws a turtle away. The woodsman spots a turtle while alone in the woods. Auntie Whispers has a basket full of dark turtles that she's seen killing and eating. One of them bounces alongside a lantern-bearing, wirt looking character in Cloud City. The fishing fish catches one in the icy water, and Wirt even has a poster for a band called the Black Turtles. Clearly, the turtles were put in for a purpose. What was it? I've discussed this in my Things You Missed in Over the Garden Wall videos before, but the official art book recently released in September 2017. It's a beautiful book, and it had even more clues about the turtles' origins. Show creator Pat McHale has discussed the turtles in interviews, referring to them as an imperfection in the quilt. In the art book, although he says we never planned on explaining the turtles and I don't plan to explain them now, he also elaborates, there's a folk tradition in many cultures of purposefully including an imperfection in your work. It's an exercise in humility, grounding your work as man-made rather than divine. I've sometimes joked with Nick Cross that the mystery of the black turtles was our imperfect stitch. And Jim Campbell, artist on many of the comics and storyboard artist for the animated series, brought up the turtles on his blog while discussing the half moon that shows up in the show. I think a lot of the stuff in the show was kind of intuitive like that. Like, this feels like the right thing for the mood we're going for. The black turtles are like that too. So the turtles offer a certain feel for the show and felt right to include, but they might not have had a concrete in-world explanation. Does that mean they don't figure into the lore at all? Well, not necessarily. In the art book, Pat mentions them while discussing Auntie Whispers' character. It helps to understand Auntie Whispers if you view her as a sort of sin eater. She ingests those turtles and removes them from the unknown. She is mostly benevolent, but the burden is clearly affecting her both physically and mentally like the dog in Chapter 1. Somehow she's able to handle it without going completely mad. Whether literally or not, the black turtles represent sin ambient in the unknown. It's probably no leap of logic to assume that the sin is a byproduct of the creation of Adelwood trees. After all, the turtles seem to tend to appear where Adelwoods grow. But how did the turtle idea come about in the first place? Again, the art book has an enlightening section. Pat McHale. For most of the production, the Adelwood trees oil was sticky. Wirt tells Greg not to touch the tree, but then he turns and Greg's already plastered to it. Wirt tries to pull Greg free, and he gets stuck too. But why would oil be sticky? Didn't make sense. At the last minute, after the episode was fully animated, I cut a bunch of scenes and made Nick reanimate bits and pieces to fill in the gaps, bless his soul. Nick Cross. After Pat reboarded this scene, there were other parts of the episode that didn't work. Greg threw a bunch of candy that stuck to the tree, and the dog ate an Adelwood stick with the candy. I asked, what does he swallow now? And we said, why not make it a turtle? So we had to have Greg put the candy on a turtle. Why not make it a turtle, huh? The turtles are easy and inobtrusive to fit into a scene. They're not exactly related to the beast, but they're not entirely separate, symbolizing a dark sin wherever they are. Seeing the turtles gives viewers the impression that there's a larger story at work, and it reminds us that the unknown, as disparate as it is, is all connected. If the show's episodes were supposed to feel like patches of a quilt, as Pat's claimed, then the turtles are the scenes holding it together, running underneath it and showing themselves here and there, never perfect, but always present. Are you a big Over the Garden Wall fan? Do you like to write, draw, or make music? Check out the Wayward Leaves zine, a fan-made zine for the Over the Garden Wall fan community. All proceeds benefit the Save the Frogs charity. Applications close on October 20th, so get them in while you can, and be sure to check out the zine once it's published. More info at waywardleavezine.tumblr.com.